And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today we're taking a look at Cave Troll. Now, Cave Troll is not a new game. This is a new version of Cave Troll. Cave Troll, I, man, when I first got into the new Euro games, and yes, Cave Troll is a Euro, well, kind of a Euro game. Um, I, this was one of the first games I picked up. I said, wow, it sounds interesting. It's called Cave Troll. And I was still running on that high of seeing the Cave Troll in Lord of the Rings. Oh, okay. Well, I was kind of disappointed, I remember. Like, oh, the Cave Troll is not what I thought. This is not uh, kill other people as much as it's more of an area control, take that mix of a game. Well, let's see how the game is. I've already reviewed it as a written review those many years ago. Let's see how it's held up and see how the new version plays. The new version basically replaced things with miniatures. Yeah, miniatures. Let's see. The goal of this game is to get the most treasure, which is going to equal points. As you get treasure over the course of the game, you just track it here on the outside. You'll notice that each room here has a certain number of treasure in. There are staircases located throughout the dungeon. Those are where your heroes are going to enter. Rooms can go from one room to the other through a door, but there are also pits where monsters can appear, and then monsters can come and go into rooms from those pits. So players are going to be have four actions on their turn, except at the beginning of the game they have fewer. You know, the first player starts with one action, etc. So what actions can you take? Well, one of the most basic actions is simply to draw a card from your own personal deck, take that card and play it. So I have a dwarf here. So I'm going to bring the dwarf out and place him on one of the staircases. Each player has a card here, which tells you what each of the different units do. So you notice there's a ton of adventurers, and then there's also a knight, a dwarf, a barbarian, a thief, and then you also have two monsters, an orc and a wraith, and then two events, a cave troll and a treasure chest. So bringing a guy out on the board is one, if it happens to be a monster, they show up in a pit. You can also move as an action. So maybe for my four actions, it's one, two, three, and a one, two. I'll leave that guy in the room. I draw another card, get an adventurer, that's three, and then place him here for four. So players are going to be playing these cards, trying to move to rooms with treasure in that room. Now as players play these cards, you'll look at the bottom of each card and you'll notice there is a time icon on some of them. Whenever there are five time icons total on all the players' cards that have been played thus far, then a scoring happens. Now when a scoring happens, you'll take each room and whoever has the most people in that room. So. You know, maybe in this room here is a tie, no one gets it, but let's say yellow had one more person than everybody else in that room, then they would get four points. If there's a treasure chest in the room, it doubles the treasure in that room for whoever is winning. The, uh, a dwarf can do the same thing. So here, because a dwarf is one of the characters in this room, and I have a treasure chest there, I am getting a lot of gold in that room. I'm sorry, treasure chest doesn't double it, it adds four. But still, that's a lot of gold, so other players will probably not want me to do that. A knight, when a knight enters a room, uh, no one else can come into that room except for other knights. A and if you, uh, an opposing player has their orc out on the board, and when a knight goes in there, he'll kill the orc. Now, the orcs, when you have those, you, the orc, you can move your orc around and send your opponent's heroes back. You can remove them. So the orc goes around killing those, so you want to kill the orcs with knights. And then there's also a wraith on the board, and a wraith will move around. Here's my wraith here. And when they move in a room, they can push a character out of a room. The cave troll, of which the game is named after, when he goes into a room, boom, everyone has to leave that room. Well, each, each person moves one person out of that room and everyone else in that room is destroyed and then no one else can go into that room. So basically a cave troll can just basically shut a room down. There's a barbarian hero. He counts as two heroes when you see who controls a room. And a thief, as an action, can jump from one room to another. 
One of the cards that you will draw will allow you to take an artifact. There's a small deck of artifacts, you draw one. This gives you a special ability you can play throughout the game. But if you don't use it, it's worth a certain number of points, uh, two, three, or four. And so the special abilities like, for example, here, this Sword of Slang, this says, choose a room occupied by at least one of your heroes and at least one orc. Remove all orcs or grunts from that room. So the cards have different things. Also, you can play, you have a deck of cards, but there are symbols in some of the cards. You can replace them with other symbols, another set of cards. So instead of playing the classic game, you can play the variant game where the paladin it, there's a giant slayer, a berserker, an assassin, a banshee, a grunt, and a rampaging troll. They basically all have the same figures, but they all have very different abilities. The only things that are the same are your adventurer and the treasure chest. So you can play with these if you get bored with the other abilities. There's also a few cards that when you play them, you will instantly score a room of your choice. So this will continue until one player's deck is depleted. At that point, you'll do one final scoring of the board, and whoever has the most treasure is the winner. Well, the miniatures certainly make the game nicer, but I don't think that they were necessary. Okay, you know, the miniatures, you know, people often say Tom is wowed by miniatures. Sure, I like miniatures, but I think the game miniatures or not would have been the same for me here. I do enjoy this game, but you have to take it for what it is. It's very light, but at the same time, it's very take that-ish, you know. Oh, I'm gonna move my, I'm gonna put my cave troll here. And you have to be very cautious when you get that treasure chest. Where are you gonna put it? Because you need to defend that room. Hopefully you can put your treasure chest out in the same turn where you can score a room and get ahead of everybody else. But the game will kind of devolve, especially when you're playing with four players. Everyone's running around going, oh, I think, uh, oh, who's winning? He's winning? Okay, I'll go take some of his treasure away. And that's fine. That's how area control games work. And I like the fact that this one is 30 minutes. It's a solid 30 minutes. It looks good. It's easy to move all the pieces around. You might have a little bit of trouble sometimes telling pieces apart, but they did make the monster bases square and the, and the heroes circular, so I did like that. But there are some times where we need to point out that the guy was a dwarf and not one of the regular adventurers. The variant side. The rule book said, hey, if you want to, you can. some people can use variant, some people can use regular. I highly recommend not doing that because some of the characters work against each other, like I showed you where the knight takes out the orc. Well, if the other person's not playing with the orc, then the knight's not as useful in that regard. So I recommend you play the variant, but do everyone with the variant or everyone with the regular base. That still gives you enough variety. Cave Troll's easy setup. It's easy to teach. It's easy to understand. It looks cool. It is not a dungeon crawl. If you don't like fantasy orc slaying things, you could still like this game. On the other hand, if that's what you're looking for, you should probably go elsewhere. This is about moving a few people around and trying to control rooms. They could almost theme to anything else, but the cave troll is a big deal in the game because when he comes in, boom, he takes a room and everyone else is out of that room. Or you can play an airside with a rampaging cave troll who moves around. It's up to you. I like it. I don't know that it's a great game. It's just a solid, good one. But when you have 30 minutes to spare and you're in the mood for a short area control game, of which there is not many, this is one I can recommend, Cave Troll. Dice Tower Judgment approved! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. The door. Yeah.